It's been over a year since I looked at the best note-taking apps for the iPad, and a surprising amount has changed since then. Some beloved apps have gone to the subscription model, some have gone free to a point, and loads of new ones have popped up all over the App Store. Today, I wanted to update my video from last year and to give you all a full rundown of the note-taking landscape on iPad, and I'll give you my honest recommendations and crown a winner too. Oh, and just as a heads up, my notes aren't aesthetically pleasing at all, so don't expect any amazing handwriting or sketches. Once again, I want to set out my rules for this test. Apple Pencil support is a must-have, a desktop app to access your notes on a PC is preferred, and last year I actually said no to apps that have a subscription model, but it looks like I can't say that anymore. Times have changed in the note-taking world, so I think we should get right into it. I wanted to start this video by looking at some apps I missed last time, so let's start with Nebo. And honestly, I'm really impressed. Nebo is a great little app that I've taken quite a shine to since I tried it out. It's really not bad at all. The first thing I noticed with this app is how well the pencil tuning is implemented. Nebu is fantastic to write on with the Apple Pencil. I would almost go as far as to say this one feels the best to write on of all the ones I've tested, which is really good at its free entry price. Some headline features that make Nebu stand out to are math support. You can add an object that allows you to figure out math problems that you write down. The handwriting to text conversion has been flawless for me and it shows what you're writing as you go. And I like how a simple double tap converts it to text for you. The option to have your notes as a freeform page is a really nice addition too. This allows you to create a page that you can scale to any size you want, which I found great for mind mapping or if you just really want to spread out with a bigger idea. There's also a desktop app for Windows and Mac, which is a nice touch. To start with, Nebo is free and technically you could use it as a free app if you're willing to work around its limitations, but those limitations are pretty vast. You can't import PDFs, you can only have one notebook set up, there's no cloud sync, and even exporting and publishing notes isn't possible. So I would say it's worth paying the around $6.99 to get full access to unlock all of those features. Overall, Nebo is a pretty complete package here and I don't really have that much against it at all. Another app that came up a lot in the comments last time was Noteful, which is another free app with some features locked behind a paywall. Noteful gives you a little more than the others before you have to pay, which is nice. You can have up to 10 notebooks, PDF markup is here, and there's no limits on exporting your notes. Noteful has some cool features too. There's tab notes. If you've got more than one notebook open, you can open two or more instances of the app so you can transfer things between your notes. And there's layer support, which is a really interesting addition. If you're a little unsure of what that is, it allows you to add a layer to your notes so you can add annotations or sketches without affecting your original content which you can then toggle on or off. This is pretty common in our apps, but it's pretty unique here in a note taker and I quite like it, it's a cool addition. One of its best tricks though is audio recording, which is built into the app. Taking a page out of Notability's book, Noteful will allow you to record while you're taking notes and then let you play it back while showing what notes you took at the time of recording, making it perfect for recording lectures. I honestly don't know why this isn't a more common feature across the board on these apps, but it's really nice to see here on Noteful. Sadly, there's no desktop app here and there's no handwriting to text conversion either, which is a shame. If you do decide it's good enough and you go to buy it, it's £4.50 as a one-off lifetime fee, which grants you access to more notebooks and a host of other features, including loads of promised future updates. Overall, it's not a bad app at all, but I do think your money might be better spent elsewhere. Okay, moving on now to Apple Notes and let's face it, Apple Notes has kind of gone from strength to strength since I last took a proper look at it, and I think I'm going to echo what I said in my previous video. The search for a decent note taker for many people might start and end with Apple Notes. It's still a really great way to take notes within Apple's ecosystem, and furthermore, it's the only true free app on this list. Nothing is hidden behind paywalls, and you're getting it out the box with the iPad along with Apple's ongoing support to back it up, which is quite a big deal. Apple has updated it with some awesome features since last time too. There's actionable handwriting, which allows you to action certain things you write down like times and dates, which then allows you to create calendar events or reminders out of them, which is really, really cool. There's lock notes, handwriting to text conversion, support for two instances of the app, smart drawing, text formatting. And because it's Apple's own app, you get further integrations like Quick Note, which lets you tap on the lock screen with the pencil to jump straight into a note if you're in a pinch. So it's fair to say it's really fully featured. I have 
have very little to say when it comes to bad points too. I wish there was a Windows client, I don't know why there isn't an audio recorder, and things like stickers and further personalization are just absent from here, but it's a fine app for note taking. Overall, you could do a lot worse than Apple Notes, and I think it beats out most of the free offerings from third party note taking apps for sure. I actually took to Instagram to ask how many of you are still using Apple Notes on your iPad, and way over half of you said you still are, which is a testament to how good it's gone and how well it's tightly wound into the Apple ecosystem. Oh, and you should follow me over on Instagram for loads of behind the scenes stuff if you're interested in that. Next up, let's take another look at Microsoft's OneNote. Last year, I gave OneNote the award for best free app for note taking on iPad thanks to its robust feature set and excellent cross compatibility. It doesn't matter what phone, laptop, tablet or PC you're on, you can always access OneNote and it will always be up to date. And I think for something like note taking, that's a bit of a killer feature. I was also a huge fan of how OneNote organizes itself. You select a notebook, a section, then a page, and all of it's just highly sortable within the app. It just makes getting to where you need to be really, really easy. I also thought the standard page layouts of it being a freeform note was cool. Being able to zoom in and out and turn your page into any size depending on what you're doing is kind of awesome and I like that being the standard feature. Of course, all of those good points still stand today, but it's not without its setbacks. And there's still a major one that bugs me. You can't record audio and write at the same time on here. So if you're sitting in a lecture and you want to record the lesson, you can, but you can't take notes at the same time, which feels like a really huge oversight. I hope they get around to fixing this, but a year on from last time I looked at it, it's sadly still an issue. There's also no handwriting to text conversion on the iPad itself. You have to do that on the desktop app, which is just really strange. Those bad points aside, I know for a fact that if I was split between a load of different ecosystems, then this is probably where I would go to to do all of my note taking. It's a really excellent offering and the downsides don't affect me too much. And the ultimate cherry on top is that OneNote is free. The only time when you might have to shell out for it is if you need more than the five gigabytes provided of free cloud backup. Okay, let's talk about the big guns now. First up is GoodNotes 5. Last year, I crowned this as the overall winner for me because of its great usability, personalization, and dedication to replicating a physical notebook in a digital form. It's been my go-to app since then, just so I lay out all my bias on my sleeve. However, I am being objective in this rundown. I don't think this app is perfect by any means, even though I really enjoy it. One awesome feature that's come since last time is it's now a free app to try, so you can give GoodNotes a whirl before spending out on it. And if you do end up wanting the full package, it's a one-off fee with no subscription costs. And I really do think that's the right move. For me though, what keeps me coming back to GoodNotes is just how the app feels and works. I still think it provides the most real feeling of any notebook experience of these apps. Some things I love are the tab notebooks at the top of the app, which is an excellent feature for jumping between separate notes. The smart drawing is still the best on the market for helping you sketch things out. You can open two instances of the app. The handwriting to text function still works a treat. And there's been some sweet little additions since last year, like stickers and the community tab for checking out other people's work. GoodNotes as well for me just seems to handle PDF markup really well and probably the best out of all of these apps. There's still issues though and there's one big one. There's no audio recording available within this app at all. None. So if you're a student who this app is pretty much aimed at, you can't record a lecture while taking notes unless you make use of another application and then insert it in afterwards. I don't know why GoodNotes are avoiding this feature. It's been heavily requested by the community and I think it fits perfectly into the student focus that it has. I'm also not huge on how it organizes itself. You can have folders and notebooks within them, which is fine. But when it comes to navigating an actual notebook, it just feels like an afterthought. Outlines and favorites are there to help, but I can't help but feel like a simple chapters or sections option would just solve that problem. I'm obviously talking from personal experience and I know some people can use it really well, but I just ended up not using those features. GoodNotes has a desktop app, but it's only for Mac and it replicates the iPad app pretty closely. I think it would be awesome for them to get a Windows client in here, which they have mentioned they're working on in the past. Overall, I still really love GoodNotes. The feature set combined with the ease of use and the tactility of the app as a whole 
just make it an easy go-to for me. Next up is perhaps the biggest note-taking app out there, it's Notability. And I'm really sad to inform you that this app is now a subscription-based model at around £10 a year. And look, generally speaking, I don't have a big vendetta against subscription-based apps, but for a note-taker, I can't help but feel like it's one step too far and Notability is the only one on this list doing it so it doesn't really feel like a necessary step. That said, like good notes, Notability is now free to test out with some basic features if you want to give it a go first, which is cool at least. Pricing aside, Notability is a well-loved app for a reason. It's one of the best out there, and it still retains the absolute best pencil tuning in my eyes. Writing, drawing, and sketching on Notability is a true pleasure, and they've got the feeling down to a T. Note organization is also really simple. You select a topic which acts as a notebook and then make pages within it. And these can also be organized by dividers too, which is useful. Handwriting to text conversion is also excellent and the intelligent shapes are also really well implemented. It's also got a handwriting search tool too, which is great. And of course, opening up two instances of the app is nice and easy. Notability has also opened a community style tab called the Notability Gallery, which allows you to look and download other people's notes. I've yet to have any kind of great results from this though, and the same goes for Good Notes Community tab. Notability still has the killer feature of the built-in audio recorder too, so you can record lectures or whatever is going on around you while you're taking notes. Also on playback, it will show you what notes you took at the time, which is just such an awesome feature, and it shows where your brain was at at the point. Even though I was lucky enough to purchase the app before the subscription model came in, there's still features hidden behind the new subscription paywall. Again, for superficial things like planners and stickers, I don't mind so much, but hiding technology like math conversions just feels mean. Notability also has a Mac app, which mirrors the iPad app, and it's good. Again, I wish there was a Windows client, but that seems to be a bit of a recurring theme with note takers on the iPad. Despite Notability being the most expensive on this list, it's still absolutely one of the best note takers out there. And I think for students who sit in lectures a lot, this is a fine way to go about your note taking needs. Picking a winner here is actually quite hard because this time around, all of the note takers here are really good options. Not one of them was horrible to use like Google Keep was last time around. And seriously, if you said you were using any of these apps on this list, then I'd be like, yep, yeah, that's a good choice. However, I'm going to crown two winners again, one free and one paid, and I'm happy to award the best free note-taking app to the very vanilla Apple Notes, which just nudges out one note this time around. With awesome features like actionable text, smart drawing, and text conversion, I think Apple Notes does absolutely everything most people could ever want from a note-taker on the iPad, while keeping the cost, well, free. If you're in the Apple ecosystem, then there really is no better way to get started taking good quality notes. And for the best paid app, if you feel like you want more from your note taker, for the second year in a row running, it's got to be Good Notes 5 for me. There's very few note takers that do everything perfectly and have the best pricing structure, but I think for me at least, Good Notes is the best one out there. It's not perfect as mentioned, there's no Windows app, I still think they could do more of the community tab and they really, really need to put in an audio recorder. But for me, it's going to be my continual go-to note taker and it's the one I'm going to recommend over all the others. So congratulations, good notes, keep up the good work. So there you have it, another year of looking at the best note-taking apps for the iPad. I hope you got something from it and enjoyed the video. Let me know what your favorite note-taker is or whichever one you're using in the comments below, and I will see you all in the next one. <laughs>